Okay, well, I can tell you as far as which way to prefer, th prefer three link or four link, uh, whichever one has the best geometry. And because grip in a car, whether it's front grip or rear grip, it's all about suspension geometry, putting as much tire, putting as much weight on the tire as, as you can at all times to get the maximum grip. So what I did is I actually pulled out, let's see if I can pull this up here. I pulled out uh, a few pages from the uh, Speed Therapy Academy. Okay, as far as three links and four links, there's different kinds of three links and four links. Uh, this shows the parallel three link, parallel four link, and parallel three link, and also triangulated. Uh, I refer, kind of refer this to, as to splayed. And this is, this is an example of, uh, this is similar to what's on an S197. It's a three link with a panner bar, which is, you know, pretty common uh, setup. Uh, but the, uh, the thing about, we'll get the panner bars and watch links in a minute. But anytime you've got parallel uh, trailing arms for rear suspension, you have to have something for lateral location. Otherwise, it's going to fly all the way around. Now, when you've got triangulated, this is sort of self-centering. Okay. So using a panned rod is lateral location. Now, here's another picture of, you know, a triangulated or splayed. Uh, upper control arms, which it's self-centering, they keep the axle centered. And here's a more, this is like a double splayed uh, setup. And here is the, you know, the uh, S197 Fox Mustangs. They've got a double splay and you can see the double splay. And I mean, it's good for locating the axle, but I can tell you that the rear suspension geometry uh, on these is not particularly good uh, for a number of reasons. Let's see, get back here. Okay, now wherever the panner bar crosses the center line of the car, right there, that's the roll center. That's the the geometrical point at the back. The back of the car wants to roll around. Now Mustangs have the roll have the panner bar up pretty much in the middle of the differential, and as you go around a corner. You can just feel uh, that inside tire. You feel the car roll up and you feel the inside tire getting light. Uh, that's because the roll center is high. Now, the, the, there's two ways to locate uh, lateral location for rear axle. One's a panner bar and the other's a watch link. Now, a watch link is technically the best way to locate for lateral location of the rear axle. However, the problem arises is wherever the, the center pin is on the bell crank, that is your roll center. And because of the way the bell crank goes, it's really difficult to get to move your roll center down. Now, uh, I moved the, the, in, in our uh, AGS 4.0 rear grip kit, we moved the panner bar all the way down to the bottom of the differential. So we moved the roll center from the middle of the differential down to the bottom. It's about you know, four, four inches or so. Uh, with the watch link, you can't quite do that. Now, back in, in the Trans Am days, what we used to do is we used to take a watch link and that horizontally to the bottom of the differential so that we'd get the benefit of a watch, but we'd also, also put the roll center on the bottom of the diff. Uh, now, on those cars, it was easy because they have like an underslung chassis, so it's easy to just go right over and, and hook the, uh, you know, the radius rods off the bell crank, the chassis. Where in a Mustang, it gets a little more complicated and plus there's only so low you can get that, the, the watts length. So that's why I, I stuck with the panner bar. It's, it's simple, it's, uh, it's lightweight, and we can get the roll center all the way down, down to the bottom differential, which, which really helps the back of the car handle. Now when we get to the, get to the Mustang, the problem is if you, do, if you draw at the suspension geometry, what happens is your roll center ends up being, I can't remember now, it's like 17, 18 inches off the ground which is really high. And that's why the back of, of uh, Fox and S SN95 Mustangs have so much roll to them and they have such little rear grip. So back again, we were doing, uh, you know, we were doing the uh, AGS 3.0 for the uh, SN95 Mustangs. We used, introduced a panner bar uh, and the panner bar was not there for axle location because the splayed control arms locate the axle. It was there to defeat the factory roll center and introduce a new roll center at the bottom of the differential. And that worked really, really well. Uh, we haven't brought that 
particular product back because it was one of those real, say, a pain in the butt type of, of products. Uh, the first issue we ran into is the real estate in the back of an SN95 Fox is really tight. So packaging that in there around the exhaust systems was a problem, you know, because, you know, everybody had a different exhaust system and everybody expected, you know, our, our parts to fit their exhaust system. I think we had four different, uh, we used to call them track kit plus, four different pattern setups based on different exhaust systems. And even though we'd engineer it, so there's plenty of clearance around the exhaust, we still have people complain. Uh, and what they didn't realize is they either had the, the exhaust mounted wrong or they didn't allow enough room because the exhaust will expand. So that was a big complaint to people. They didn't understand that, you know, okay, we, we build a product to fit most of them. You have to figure out how to make it work. And the other thing is people would not read the instructions and they would not, the, the, when you're running a panner bar to defeat the roll center uh, and, and introduce a new roll center, it has to be zero preload on it, which means that ride height, you need to be able to slide one of the bolts in and out with any preload. Uh, people wouldn't read that. Uh, they, they'd, uh, they'd put the panner bar on, it was up in the air, jack it down, they preload the whole thing. So you'd have the, the panner bar fighting against the, the upper control arms, the center of the axle. And yeah, so it's just, it's just one of those products we didn't bring back. At some point, I'm going to do a new rear suspension for Fox and, uh, and, and SN95 live axles. But for right now, the, the big thing we're using on, on Fox and SN95 is IRS. And we, uh, we, we have, we're the only people that really understand the IRS and support it. So anyway, that's, that's, you know, that's the kind of like the geometry, you know, three link or four link. Now we get the torque arm. Torque arm is absolutely my least favorite. You now, without getting too deep into geometry, the, the instant center is controlled. You, know, you don't have any, any you know, with, with the three link, like the, the S197 three link was just a joy to work with because I, I, it wasn't, wasn't really hard to create the geometry I wanted uh, by moving the pickup points around. But when you've got a torque arm, you're kind of stuck. Your instant center, which has to do with anti-squat, uh, is kind of fixed, and you can't do much with it. Uh, and the only reason these work so good, I mean, they work in forward. They're really good for forward bite, but they have some some issues uh, in in braking and some other things that uh, I'll kind of get to. Yeah. <clears throat> Stop sharing for just a second to show you something. Okay. Okay. This is this is this is sort of like my Bible, uh, the race car vehicle dynamics. I mean, this is you you talk about this is super heady stuff. Uh, but in here, there's a huge section on suspension geometry that I've read through maybe you know 20, 30 times. Uh, that's been kind of like the foundation for what what I've designed in suspensions. But what they talk about in here. Uh, on page 657 and 658, and actually had to take, this, uh, we, we have this, the Academy guys uh, have access to this, but it's on the, the description's on three different pages. So I had to like cut and paste. But here's what, uh, here, here's what they say about a torque arm. It says, this suspect suspension has a fixed side view swing arm that is borderline acceptable. Power hop and or brake hop can occur with this type of suspension. The amount of anti-squat obtained is limited because the height of the side view instant center can never realistically be raised even as high as the, the current center line. 30% is about maximum obtainable. Uh, to assure roll understeer, the lower control arm must be angled downward at the front. That's again, pretty standard in the stuff that I do. And this also means that the side view swing arm instant center height will be low. Okay, well, let me get back to sharing that picture again. So what they're talking about, this is the instant center. And, and I'm not, not going to, there's, there's like too much information to even try to give it to you uh, in, in a short, in, in, in short spurts. But like I say, in the academy, we spent two whole weeks going through suspension, suspension geometry. But the instant center has to do with your anti-squat and is very limited. And I, I can attest to what uh, was written in the, in the, in the textbook is I was driving, we had, we built some uh, 95 Cobras for a couple of customers, put on the Cobra twins, one was red, one was white. And I mean, they were really cool cars. I mean, they were, you know, full suspension. Uh, we, they still had the Windsor motors, 
Uh, we board and stroked them at the 352, I think. And they were just an awesome car to drive on track. And the guys that we sold them to just love track days. What they do, they have a big semi and they would rent a trace place like Putnam that I met them at one time. And they would bring like three or four cars a piece. And I asked them why they bought so many cars. It was really simple. They thought when well, one breaks, we just got more, another we can drive. So they, I drove one of their, I can't remember if it was a Camaro or a Firebird. And the, uh, the torque arm was originally introduced in uh, 1924 on Type 35 Bugatti. Uh, GM used it pretty extensively in the Camaros simply because of packaging. Uh, it was really easy to package. Uh, not, not really the best in handling, but easy to package. And then some, I guess not for Mustangs, uh, somewhere on the West Coast, uh, for like NASA racing, somebody, you know, put a torque arm on a car and it worked better than the standard suspension, which really doesn't work very good. So everybody thinks the torque arm is the only way to go. Well, it's, it's you know, it's better, but it's really not the optimum you can, you can do. Uh, you know, it, it's, you know, suspensions have come a long way since 1924. And, you know, I was driving a Camaro, I can't remember the Camaro Firebird with the torque arm in there. And Putnam, I can't remember the name of the corner, but there's one that you I break really, really hard, go in deep, and kind of come around. It's not quite a hairpin, but it's pretty close to it. Uh, and, you know, I can get around that pretty good by going really late, breaking hard, and then turning in late. And when I tried to do that with a Camaro, the whole back of the car started bouncing all over the place. And then when I finally got through the corner, I just heard this clunk, clunk, clunk under the car. So I drove back to the pits. And I told them there's a, there's a clunk in the car, and the ah, torque arm came loose. So it's something that happens to them quite a bit. So that kind of tests the fact that the torque arm, you know, did hop a lot under hard braking, which means that with the geometry I have in S197 rear suspension, you can outbreak a, a torque arm suspension like like crazy. Uh, and that's the best time to pass somebody's under braking. So the other thing I don't like about torque arms is they're heavy. They're big and heavy. They add a lot of mass, unsprung, unsprung weight uh, to the rear axle. And it's like, you know, unsprung weight is your enemy. The heavier something is, the more energy it takes to move it. So if you've got, already got an axle that's pretty heavy, add more weight to it, it's going to take even more energy to move it around. And here's another, another version that actually has a watch link included. And uh, I mean, that's it's a lot of weight and a lot of complexity uh, that I just, you know, I'm not, I don't like uh, I, I, in all my years, I've come up with a better solution, and this is it. This is my S197 rear grip kit. Uh, it's simple, it's elegant, it's lightweight. Uh, it actually saves a lot of weight in the back, and it works like crazy. Um, and it's not, it's not parts, it's a system. Every piece in the rear grip kit is engineered to work with every other piece to improve rear suspension geometry. Uh, starting from the back is the panda bar. Remember I said we have a panda bar relocation kit? This is how far down we move the panda bar. That's like four inches down to the bottom of the differential. So the back of the car doesn't want to roll up as much. Uh, the, between bringing the rear roll center down in the rear grip kit and the front roll center up in the front grip kit, it takes the angle uh, that, that points down into the ground and makes the front of the car push like crazy and flattens that out so you can get to the gas sooner. And then the next part that we do is we've got axle brackets uh, to relocate the pickup point on the axle. And this is all about anti-squat. It, it's interesting is like there's, every, everybody has axle brackets now and a lot of them have like multiple holes. You know, there's only one hole in my axle brackets. And that's because, you know, I've, I've done the math, done the research, done the testing. And I've, I have already engineered uh, where, where I think the best instant center is for the best anti-squat for the back. The anti-squat, which is where it really gets the power down off the corner, uh, it also is anti-lift, which under hard braking, the back of the car is the one to jump up so much. So between the where I move the, the pickup point on the axle brackets and also the U-link upper control arm module is, is longer than factory and the pickup point is moved. Again, so I, I can, I can Im impact by the, you know, Drawing a line from the, uh, the pickup point through the front out, out to where it intersects with this. And that gives us the, the instant center in the anti squat that I'm looking for. Uh, again, we talk about that extensively in the, uh, in the academy. And the other little trick that I do is the, the, the uh, 
control arms on 197 are splayed outward at the front. So what we do is I've got the bushing. So we 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 take and we we move the uh, the front part in and the back part out. So now we've got lower control arms are parallel to the center line of the car, which all race cars have parallel control arms. And by making them parallel, if you were if you look at a stock one, look like down from the top in plan view, and you were take and and draw a line back where the, the two uh, lower control arms uh, intersect, it'd be you know well behind the car. And if you take that point and you uh, draw a line from that point up through the roll center, and the factory roll center is up high, then you got your your roll axis is pointing up in the back, and uh, that's not what we're looking for. So by making these parallel. Uh, there is no there is no conversion uh, of of, uh, of of the lines, which means the con, the uh, conversion point is infinity. So now the roll axis is the the, the uh, roll center, which is the bottom of the diff, is parallel to the lower control arms, which just keeps the back of the car so nailed down. I think this is this is the absolute, in my view, the absolute second best rear suspension that's available for Mustangs today. And I said second best. Why is it second best? Because this is AGS 4.0, Advanced Geometry Suspension System 4.0. This is the new, uh, not very well known because it's kind of like been a secret, AGS 4.5. Uh, this system is patent pending right now. And it, uh, it does absolutely, totally amazing things. Now they're, it's pretty complex. So we're just building these in small lots. Uh, We'll do another. Uh, we'll be doing another. I think webinar on this on the uh, on the K Link uh, in the near future. But the big feature is the fact that it decouples axle roll and body roll. Uh, so it doesn't matter how much the body rolls going through a corner, uh, the axle is decoupled and the axle stays flat on the ground with the same amount of weight on both rear tires all the time. So the, the grip is just amazing. In fact, there's so much rear grip that we have to go way up in the rear spring rate uh, just to get the car ba balanced again. Uh, so the front uh, front front will turn. We actually run the spring rates on, on these cars just like we do on an IRS car, which is kind of strange. And the other thing that it does, aside from decoupling axle roll and body roll, is it lowers the roll center a lot, way lower than anybody ever thought possible in a live axle car. And only the people that have them know just how low that roll center is. But we'll do an, we'll do another uh, another uh, webinar on uh, on the K Link rear suspension system, and it is a system. Uh, like everything I do, it's my my suspensions are only three basic components: the rear grip, front grip, and springs and shocks. Because again, systems, it, everything has to work together to work. So this is this is the newest. Uh, if you're interested, you can set up a 15 minute consult. We can talk about it. But this is this is more for advanced type people. Uh, but, you know, kind of the question becomes, you know, how good is it? Well, let's see. Let's see. I think Steve out in the West Coast. Uh, I think he picked up three or four seconds with rear grip kit one off his best times and on, on this one track. And then with the K link, he picked up four seconds. Uh, we get another customer, uh, David. At uh, uh, not Laguna, uh, Sears Point. I don't know what it's called now. It used to be Sears Point. When I raced there, that, that's what I called it. So uh, anyway, at, at uh, uh, Sears Point in, uh, in Northern California, uh, David has a Boss 302S. So the difference between the you know the the suspension that comes on a Boss 302S and my full he did the full AGS 4.5. Uh, front grip kit, rear grip kit, and uh, the JRZ springs, springs and shocks. Uh, the difference was he was eight seconds a lot faster. So uh, nobody else has anything like that. That's why I spent a lot of years working on that. That's why we're, 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 we've applied for a patent on it. 